isn't necessarily the official debut of Hold My Cutter. This is a preview of the opening of this very special podcast. That'll come your way. We drop it tomorrow. But Greg Brown, Michael McHenry here to preview not only Hold My Cutter, but the Pittsburgh Pirates season coming your way from Lee Com Park. Hold My Cutter, by the way, we talk uh, double meaning, the cut pitch the cutter in baseball, the cut fastball, and the cutter used to cut the cap end of a cigar. We'll talk to uh, David Bednar when we drop tomorrow, but Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think about the start of this Pirate season? Legitimately, we're getting all kinds of questions around Bradenton. How are they going to do this year? I I think they're in good headspace. I mean, you think about the last week, they've had a couple rain days. They they altered some things and they adapted very well. I think it's always a good sign of a really good team. And watching Paul Skeens and Contreras throw today, they looked absolutely outstanding. Contreras sitting 95, 96, breaking stuff looks sharp. And then Paul Skeen's not human. Change up is absolutely disgusting. So I'm excited. What about you? Well, triple digits, right? For you, 101, I saw a couple times. Ease, with ease. With ease. And he uh, was facing, I'm trying to think who, Joshua Palacios, Jack Selinski, and Nick Gonzalez. And frankly, and, and these guys would say it um, if they were here. We're not talking behind their backs. But Selinski and Palacios were just going back to the dugout, shaking their heads. Just an inning for Paul Skeen's. But, man. And had a lot of people excited. There was a buzz around Pirate City where the workouts took place. I mean, quote unquote, Jack Swinski walked right up to me and goes, That changeup's not fair. Uh-huh. I mean, that tells you a little bit about the talent and ability Paul Skeens has. And I know a big buzz is Henry Davis. Yeah. You know, what's what's he gonna be? Is he gonna be behind the play? Is he gonna be in right field? Well, the man's made great adjustments at the plate. He's gotten off the dish a little bit. His hands are moving better. And I really like what I've seen behind the plate. He spent a lot of time this off season, I heard, with Rebello and guys really trying to hone that craft. It's a long Major League Baseball season, 162 games. It's a long spring <laughs> training. I mean, really long. We're all excited yeah. right yeah. now. But I know we've told the story before about former Pirates manager Jim Leland early on, a member of the media. I haven't even played a game yet. I was talking about, wow, who did you like when you saw it in the bullpen? And Leland dropped this cigarette and, uh, <laughs> and said, you know, we haven't played a game yet in spring training. You're asking me to to talk about a guy throwing a bullpen, well, uh, that's kind of where we are now in, in baseball. We scrutinize everything, everything under a microscope, and especially a Pirates team looking for positives so you can understand where we're coming from when we really talk up Paul Skeens. And again, you mentioned some of the guys shaking their heads back to the dugout. I mean, this is the future. Now, I, I'm not speaking out of school here, but I don't see any way in the world that Paul Skeens breaks camp with the Pittsburgh Pirates. That is, the Pirates have said they're going to watch him and see what happens. I just don't see it. Uh, maybe you think differently. I still think he's going to have to pitch a little bit more in the minor leagues. Yeah, I mean, you think about development, things have really changed. I mean, you're going to see Tamar in, in double A as a 19 year old, didn't turn 20 until the actual season starts. So the game's really changed. But yeah, I think you're going to see him start in the minor leagues, kind of get refined. I think that's more of a protection thing. It's not stuff, but it'll give him a chance to kind of pull back that anxiety not try to put too much on himself because that's easy to do when you walk into a park like PNC and I know I'm biased and you call me fair weathered I love this city I love this team as you do and I do see good things coming I do see a lot of changes over the last four or five years and I'm excited that these guys have a chance to be much better than what is anticipated well there's also a buzz around again it's early but there is a buzz you feel it around the clubhouse over Pirate City which is you know for people uh, unaware we are at the the Major League home, spring training home of the Pirates, Lee Com Park. Uh, this is where they will play their home games starting on Sunday against the Baltimore Orioles. In fact, it'll be televised, by the way, on Sportsnet Pittsburgh. Uh, Michael is down here getting some stuff for the regular season. Hannah Mears, who will debut on Sunday as the new sideline reporter, also walking around here with our producer, Adam Elmore, kind of getting the lay of the land. But uh, So Pirate City is the huge complex about, uh, I think, eight miles, if I'm not mistaken, by the way the crow flies. A uh, little play on words. But that's where it's, it's happening now, and then they'll all come over here and be ready for uh, Sundays. Uh, Saturday, we 
open up the season down in Fort Myers, which is about a two hour drive from Bradenton, Florida. Did you mind those drives, by the way, when you're playing? I'm not gonna lie, I, I love the beach. Well. I love the smell yeah. here, the travel. I could do it out. I, I could say Arizona's a lot better in that aspect, but what they've done to this ballpark, just since I played here in 2013, is remarkable. I came back in 17 and got to see a lot of the changes, but the field looks immaculate. It's absolutely ready for some winning baseball and get ready. Tune to your channels and get ready for some pirate baseball. By the way, we are, we're lucky right now. We're doing this as a prop. Uh, you, you can't do this once the gates open. So we're, uh, we're doing this just kind of tease our podcast where we go uh, actually into a, uh, a, a cigar restaurant slash bar type place, a lounge. And, uh, and we'll look forward to that when we drop our first podcast featuring David Bednar on uh, Friday. And we'll come your way every week. But we thought we'd give you a little ambiance, a little feel for spring training because it is chilly up in the Berg. We're still a, a month plus away from the start of the regular season. But this is spring training 2024, and there is a buzz, and that's why Michael and I wanted to do something different. And we know there are a lot of podcasts out there, and they're really good. But this, we think, is going to be very, very unique, where we actually sit down with different people from all walks of life, but talk pirates, talk baseball, and again, we'll enjoy uh, a cigar now and again. But Michael, there's nothing like the start of spring training when pitchers and catchers first reported. You and your pitching staff had to report first, and and you kind of reacclimate yourself with your surroundings, get reacquainted with your buddies. It's kind of like coming back from uh, vacation when you're going to school, and school starts again, and you shake hands and give high fives and whatnot. And you know, what did you do all winter long? Well, we're back, and then the grind of of, of doing the you know, PFP and so on and they can't wait for that first game I don't think I can put it in words I was still nervous showing up to the park a couple days ago at Pirate City you were nervous yeah the same butterflies it is, it's not really a, it's a, an excitement is what it is and I, I'm pretty sure I just had a ladybug land on me so What's good luck it was a all yellow the way jacket. through yeah very well, well done by the yeah, way yeah he just spit some yellow in <laughs> no big deal hey that's right it's a black and gold yellow jacket that's exactly it's a good right. sign it's our first great sign about the pirate season just saying. A black and gold yellow jacket just landed on McHenry's wrist. And he didn't flinch, by the way. No, he took a puff of my bubblegum cigar. Yeah. But, yeah, he just said, hey, letting you know it's going to be a good year. And, Brownie, something I love about spring training is the intimacy of it. Mm -hmm. and, and for fans, that's why it's so important. You know, tune in. Learn learn what's going on with the Pirates. I think you're going to be very pleased with some of these young talent that, mm -hmm. that I've seen. I mean, it's remarkable what they can do. They can run. They can – they. they I lost my train of thought. Well, that's all right. Keep continue because we're live on tapes. We are live on yeah. tape, so we're just going to so, keep going. So we, no, we're, I will say this yeah. about that podcast. I just moved to Pittsburgh. It's near and dear to my heart. You know that as good as anybody. And I, I didn't know a lot about the rich history with baseball, with the Negro Leagues, with everything that's been in Pittsburgh. And I think that's what we're trying to highlight is the people of Pittsburgh. There's so many cool people that have either come back to Pittsburgh, left, and then come back, still live in Pittsburgh. But the stories we've just heard in just a couple episodes have been remarkable yeah, to more me. More will be coming along the way, too. We're going to bring those stories uh, all, all year long on Hold My Cutter and Michael McHenry, the former Pirates catcher. We'll, we'll bring you this. We'll talk throughout the season about the team, but we'll get in-depth. That's what this opportunity uh, allows us to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, more excited than ever, you talk about spring training and the nerves you have as now a broadcaster mm -hmm. on Sportsnet Pittsburgh. But when you and the pitchers reported to Pirate City and then got to play your first game, uh, the competition, that's what's so critical, that these guys are chopping at the bit to get out there and play their first game down in Fort Myers and then the home opener on Sunday against the Orioles. There's no question. I mean, that's the best thing about baseball and sports in general is being able to go out and compete. It's what I miss. Mm. I miss the grind and I miss competing. And, Brownie, that's something I've seen right out of the gate that's maybe a tick different than in years past. Is like I'm not hearing the word development. I'm not hearing the word he's not quite ready. I'm hearing here compete, yeah. compete, intention, yeah. intention, intention. And I think that's so important because I feel like that's exactly what what Pittsburgh's all about. Show us what you got, have good intentions, and compete like crazy. Yeah, I think nobody's fooling anybody. This is year five of this rebuild, and they've 
pretty much said that. So for Ben Charrington and Derek Shelton and the players, they know this is a very important year. No more hoping. This is now competing and talking. They've already talked about postseason now for the Pittsburgh Pirates. That doesn't mean you know they'd love to win the division. Maybe it's a winnable, a winnable division. But with that second wild card, and you, and you look at the records, you look at what the Arizona Diamondbacks did, uh, it's not a pipe dream anymore. It's a, a real possibility. And most important, it's not what we believe, but what the Pittsburgh Pirates players themselves believe. And they do sincerely think that they've got a legitimate shot for postseason play. So they're going to go out, prepare intent, starting with that first spring training game Saturday down in Fort Myers against the Minnesota Twins home opener Sunday against the Baltimore Orioles and you'll be able to watch them listen to just about every single game either on Sportsnet Pittsburgh watching on uh, our flagship station 93.7 The Fan Pirates Radio Network even on uh, the internet webcasts you'll be able to hear it all as it develops and Michael and I will be bringing you throughout uh, continuing developments now finally before we wrap up this preview of our first mm -hmm. drop uh, how do people because we'd love to hear from viewers and listeners and really get deep into what they're thinking. How does one do that? You can contact us via email at holdmycutter at gmail.com. That's holdmycutter at gmail.com. Get the information. Yeah, or you can like, subscribe, and send us some comments, or you can reach out to us on social media. We are here for you guys. We want to be a resource to answer questions. Give us some suggestions. Maybe we can bring on somebody that you want us to bring on. Who knows? We're kind of keeping it open. The, the, the palette is absolutely clean, and we're ready to go. And we're looking forward to dropping that first one. So thanks again. Hold my cutter going to be coming your way. And our first drop, which a catcher hates to hear, is uh, coming your way on Friday. Yeah, keep it in front and catch the ball, Brownie. We'll do it. Sure hope you enjoyed that episode of Hold My Cutter. Yeah, we do have to have the parrot on eventually. And we will. We'll get that parrot on. But regardless, make sure you follow us. Right, Michael? Absolutely. And if you have a translator that speaks parrot tees, yeah. we would like to know because that's the only way it's going to happen. I don't know what they're saying right now. Follow us. Like us. Share. Thank you.